Welcome, welcome. Come on in. Come on in. Let the week just melt away. I am grateful that it is Friday. I am letting the week melt away. And I will be preparing tomorrow for the Sabbath to get Sabbath rest. And then, so I'm grateful for that opportunity. Also, grateful for neighbors. Again, I called my elderly neighbor yesterday. And she was just ecstatic that someone had... Uh, done her driveway she also had anywhere from 12 to 14 inches of snow and could not maneuver in and out of there and so um and the the person that does her snow removal uh their equipment had broke down but one of the wonderful neighbors not it was a different one that than did mine a couple of days ago did hers and she was just so just so pleased that there are so many wonderful people out there that you know the person that did hers did not even know but knows she lost her husband in November but knows that um, you know they recognize that she wasn't able to get it done and so they came over and did a fantastic job of cleaning up all that snow removing all the snow and just want to thank the Lord for such wonderful neighbors I want to thank you, Lord, and I ask that you bless them, Lord. Double bless all these wonderful neighbors that are out there. Jesus told us there's one command, love your, love your neighbor like you love yourself. And our neighbor is not just a person next to us, next door, living next door, in the back, uh, in front of us or behind our homes, but it's anybody you come into contact. Be kind and generous to all those people. Be Share, um, you know, be merciful. And, and if you can do something for someone in need, you have no idea how uh, much you really are impacting their lives. So I thank all those wonderful neighbors that are out there, and I ask the Lord to bless them. Again, I am reading from Jesus Always Set Me Before You Continually. It is a reflection of Psalm 16 and 8. And beloved brothers and sisters, let's invite the Lord into our midst. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have such wonderful neighbors. Lord, we ask that... Uh, when we have the opportunity to help someone in need, that we step up and do that. And we show our godly character, our kindness, our generosity, our, our mercies. Our, we share joy and peace and not um, anger or hatred, but we're there and we're loving. And we share that with others. And Heavenly Father, as we're sitting here before you today, we ask that you bless this prayer session and that you make this a teachable moment. The word be inscribed into our hearts. And Lord, when you give us the opportunity that we step out in bold faithfulness and share your word with others. In Jesus' name, I pray. Come on in. Come on in. I'm Imelda for those who do not do not know me. And let, um, for your hearing, set me before you continually. Keep your eyes on me. I am at your right hand, close to your side. This is a most reliable source of joy knowing that I am always near. Seek to strengthen your awareness of my presence so that you can enjoy me in your moments and feel more secure. Communicating with me in silent prayers and whispers and, sp and spoken words in shouts of praise is the best way to stay attentive to me. I want you to be real with me in your prayers. Instead of worrying or obsessing about things, turn those thoughts towards me Talk with me about whatever is in your mind or on your mind. I will show you my way to handle the person or the situation that concerns you. Study and meditate the scripture. Let it saturate your heart and mind, changing your way by thinking. Changing your way of thinking. Permeate your prayers with biblical concepts and content. As you stay in close communication with me, the joy of my presence is yours. Beloved brothers and sisters, this is a reflection of Psalm 16 and 18. This particular psalm, is it, the theme of it is the joys and benefits of life, uh, benefits of a life lived in companionship with God, uh, brings joy and um, benefits now and into eternity, brings those kinds of joy uh, the benefits of joy now and into eternity. So Psalm, the Psalm 16, verse eight, I know the Lord is always with me and I will not be shaken for he is at my right side. This particular Psalm, when it says, um, he is he, saying that he will not be shaken. That's talking about David wrote the Psalm and David is talking about the unique sense of security felt by him and 
other believers. I know I feel it when I spend time with the Lord in the morning in prayer and in the evening. And when I have an opportunity during my lunch hour, I reconnect with the Lord and try to stay connected glory to glory. Because sometimes it's difficult. You get going in the day and you really have to make it a point to do that. Because God does not exempt us believers from, you know, trials and tribulations, from day-to-day -day circumstances of life. We experience what everybody else experiences. It's how we accept those experiences that makes a difference. Believers and non-believers alike experience pain, trouble, failure at times. It says so in Matthew chapter 5, verse 45. Non-believers have a sense of hopelessness though, but if you walk with the Lord and you're going through these trials and tribulations, you have hope and you have joy. And because you have hope, you have joy in your heart. Those who seek God, however, can move uh ahead move ahead confidently a non-believer doesn't they don't know where to step they're not sure-footed and confidently with what they know is right what they know is right and important in God's eyes they know that God I'm reading from my notes in my Bible they know that God will keep them from being moved off his chosen path now a non-believer doesn't have that assurance they don't know where to step they don't know how to hear the Lord speak the Lord's whisper I absolutely fine-tune my ears or pray that the Lord fine-tunes my ears to hear his whispers to hear his whispers and his guidance because he guides you and he talks to you and, oh I absolutely um you know I don't, I don't know about you but I want the Lord on my side every day every moment of every day Beloved brothers and sisters, if you do not know Jesus as a believer, today's a day you came across this broadcast for this very reason, for this very reason. Come on in, come on in and um, become a believer today. Come into the fold. It's time. And if you backslide it, it is time to come back into the fold with the Lord. And all you have to do is pray something simple as this. Gracious God, I am a sinner. Please forgive me for my sins. I believe that Jesus died for me, and by his blood, I am forgiven. Lord, I ask you to come into my heart. Search it, Lord. Cleanse it. Strip away what is not pure. Give me a new heart, dear Lord. Come into my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. I, I believe if you prayed that prayer, you are on your believer's journey now. But if you're not sure what to do, I encourage you to leave me a comment down below or send me a direct message and I'll pray with you and we'll talk about what you need to do and help you get into a Bible-based church that will help you grow as a Christian and continue to walk this path of the Lord. Beloved brothers and sisters, I want to thank you for tuning in today. I want to invite you and ask you to please share this broadcast, to click and like it and share it so that the masses may see it, no matter what platform you come across this at, on, as well as... Any broadcast that speaks of our Lord Jesus Christ, our God, um, that talks the truth, I encourage you to share that as well. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Until next time, be blessed. Bye now.